Okay, I'm at part three. And what I was saying before is that uh, um, the cylinder, uh, the technique I showed you with attaching a cylinder to the, the, the polygon plane, is good is a good technique to use to create a hole in you know a flat polygon or a flat uh, piece of geometry. Um, all you have to do is just create your cylinder. Create a cylinder. Create a cylinder. There we go. All you have to do is, again, create a cylinder, select the faces, and just basically remove all the faces except for the bottom bottom cap, um, and just use this as a template. That's all, that's all, that's all you need the cap for. And um, when you snap your vert vertices to the uh, um, template, uh, the, the, the end cap template, and all you have to do is delete it when you're done. You don't have to attach anything. So let me do a smooth preview. And we do a smooth preview and you know we got a hole inside a flat piece of geometry. A nice clean hole too. Now another thing that people don't really take into consideration, which I actually noticed on um oh was it Guild Wars, the um the one I I, I bought it and I can't remember the name of it. It's the uh, one where they're doing like the, the Nordic theme and they have this really good looking uh blonde chick on the front. And her armor, one of the straps, comes down. It's a metal piece of armor, and I don't know who who built built the model f uh, for the armor, but they didn't take in consideration that metal actually has dimension to it. If you take a look at it, um, I'm sure you'll see uh, see what I mean. Um, this metal strap or, or some of the metal detail um, has no thickness to it. And it just looks really awkward, and that's one of the things people really don't take into consideration when they're uh, modeling, um, especially if they're doing like a, a uh, modeling a, um, uh, a machine or, or something like that where you have lots of metal. Um, everything has some kind of thickness. In my, your objects are only um, two-dimensional. There's no thickness to them. So if you take a look at the edge of, of at the edge of you know the polygon plane, you see the edge of the plane, but that's absolutely no thickness. It's infinitely thin. There's no thickness to it at all. So we have to uh, create a thickness. So um, just to do that, just you know, say on this hole, we'll just grab the edges around the hole, and we'll go to Edit Mesh Extrude, and I'm going to hit the W key for the Move tool, and just move that down. I'm going to extrude again. Hit the R key for Scale, and go ahead underneath to show you what I'm doing is I'm actually scaling the edges in. Okay. Let's do a smooth preview. And if this is what you want, you have a nice, you know, rounded edge. It looks pretty cool. Um, doesn't look too machined, uh, like maybe you drilled a hole through it or something. So we're gonna we're gonna go for that look. So we're actually gonna again constrain the corner. So insert an edge loop here. Insert edge loop here. And smooth preview. And there we go. That looks like a nice piece of machined edge. Uh, ma a machined hull. I think it looks nice. I'm going to add a, uh, a blend to the object. Get rid of that. And let me turn off my wireframe on shaded. So there, you can see the nice specular on the edge. And it looks has uh, has quite a bit of realism to it. Now, even more, uh, what people don't consider is that when you're machining something and you drill a hole in something, um, at the same time when the drill is going down and removing ob uh, removing material, the drill bit's going down to your you know whatever piece of piece of metal. Um, not all the material is being pulled out; it's actually being pushed to the side, and you'll get this like little mound outside of it, um, generally speaking. A lot of times, so, um, you know, a, a really good uh, machine piece of, of equipment will have this all buffed down nice and clean and smooth, but 90% of the time it won't. Um, just general, you know, assembly line manufacturer, you'll get these little bubbles. So if you want to add another level of detail, um, you know, create your, when you create your hole, actually, let's side here do I want to create another one let's go back 
And I got another little tidbit here for you that you guys probably don't know about. Um, say I don't want this, uh, I got this like little mountain here. And I don't want that. I want all my vertices to lie flat um, on, on the uh, um, center line here, center grid line. Um, the problem would be is that if I select my vertex, I would have to go with each vertex and snap them to the grid line. That can be a real, real pain in the ass, especially if you're doing like a car and you've got like, you know, three, four, five hundred vertices that you'd have to snap to an edge. So what we're going to do here is just go over to our move tool, double click, and we get the uh, attribute editor for our move tool. And write down a move snap settings, uh, the retain component spacing. What that does is if you select your components, which at this point, at um, this point are my vertices and we do like a grid snap hold down the X and you okay why am I not grid snapping Let's see if I have no huh that's odd grid snap all the um, uh, uh, components stay exactly where they are it's just that uh, the center point snaps to the grid now we can get around that all we have to do is retain the component spacing, check off. Basically what that'll do is it will no longer retain component spacing and all your vertices will snap to the same area. So if we do a grid snap, let's go in really close. Turn off my attribute editor. Now watch the vertices as I do a grid snap. They all line up together. All the, ver all the vertices snap to the same point. And all we have to do is just bring these down, line them up, and you can even do a, a vertice snap. So I'm going to hold down the V, and I'm going to snap it to this vertex right here so everything lines up. There we go. And so let's go to our top view. Everything looks pretty. Select, do a smooth preview, and we got a nice flat edge. That's looking hot. Okay, and there's something else I wanted to show you guys, but I really can't remember what it was. Oh, okay, well, anyway, yeah, say um, you've bored your hole in there, and you want that nice little uh, little mountain, little bubble thingy that comes up. As simple as just, again, you can either select the, the vertices that are going around the edges, or just, you know, select the edges themselves. Okay, why isn't that slide? There we go. Okay, Maya doesn't want to select things that I want it to select. Or it's just not showing. Okay, anyway. I think that's it. There we go, yeah. And you just you just move, you know, move those edges up. And do a smooth preview. And there you go, you got that little little mountain again. And you can see it around there. Okay, another thing I'm going to show you, even though I've got two minutes left, um, is something fairly similar to um, attaching or like boring a hole into an object. Um, say you look at a, at, a, at a calculator or you look at your cell phone and um, some buttons aren't round, uh, they're actually pill-shaped, uh, which is similar to attaching a, a, a boring a, 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 a circular hole but there's a few things you have to take in consideration which are a little bit different than from from boring a hole um, so let me get rid of this here and I'm gonna start again and actually I'm gonna stop now and we're going to go on to this will be part four of my 10 minute uh, 10 minute uh, tutorial. So going on to 40 minutes. Okay, I'll be back.